No, I don't want a lap dance. I'm married. Don't no, just just stop. Guys, tell her to stop. Tell her to stop. I don't want a lap dance. No, I'm married. I'm married. You know what you should do, lady? You should watch our set review. Our set review is going to be on blue this time, guys. Blue. If you couldn't tell by the majestic bird lady over here. Um, we're going to be doing the blue color again. Rankings are going to be 5 to 1. And then uh, we... Or 5 to 0. I keep messing that up. That's so odd. Anyway, 5 to 0 with increments of 0.5. It's an easiest thing to say. I don't understand why, but whatever. Um... So yeah, stay tuned. It's not too long, not like our last one. Um, I keep saying that again. Maybe I should just stop saying it anyway. Anyway, go to peace. Follow, watch, hey, subscribe. Do it. Very miscreant. Very miscreant. It's the one one flyer. Is like never really good on its own. Nope. If you have enough of those blue white flying lords, maybe you play it. Or if you have more than one fairy miscreant, also maybe you play it. That's why I give it a 1.5. But I don't think, yeah, on its own, you should put this in your deck. It needs synergy. Things that can pump it. Exactly. And, um... Pump it for free. Because it is so fringe, I put it as a 1. Um, there's times when you want it, but I feel like it's too specific at times that you... Shouldn't pick it highly. Okay, moving on. Uh... Skipped hardcover, yo. Oh, my bad. Hardcover's a real card, man. Uh, <laughs> is it? <laughs> I think it's semi-real. It is an aura, which makes me like it less, but I do love looting. <laughs> and it does give you toughness, so it kind of affects the board. That's why I give it, like, a 1.5. I do I love looting. I think this is a card that you'll play one of in some decks, um, but never more than one. Yeah, so I give it a 2, um, which means that we're going to go back down to 1.5. But I give it a 2 because you're able to loot, and it also gives a um, toughness boost, which could help out a lot of the creatures, especially in the early games. Maybe. Um, Maybe it's a 2. I mean, probably play it about 50% of the time in blue, right? All right, I'll give it a 2. I don't think so. I don't know. I have hopes for this yes. card. Not high hopes, but hopes. Minor <laughs> two. victory. Hardcover gets a two. Let's <laughs> two. move on. Two right. Spectral Sailor. Spectral Sailor. This guy's sweet. I like this card. It's Not because it's a one one, one mana one one. I like it because it has flash. Uh, but I mostly like it because you can draw cards. <laughs> drawing yeah. cards is we sweet. We all know you like to draw cards and loot. <laughs> I love drawing cards. Drawing cards is like the second best thing to do. Um, but this guy's also really good with the Flyers deck, but not just that. I think almost every blue deck wants it, just because it does give that card advantage. So I rate it as a 3. I give it 3.5, because I love cards and drawing them. I love cards, <laughs> and I love to draw them. Oh, Alright, 3.5. Like 3 Alright, moving on to... Unsummon. Unsummon. It's back, unfortunately. It's been a while it's since back. it's been back. But uh, yeah. still quite solid. Still a card that I think you want at least one of in all your blue decks. Very mana efficient, very versatile. It's able to get back your own creatures to play them again later. Mm -hmm. um, and there are some good comes and play effects in this deck, in this format. Mostly at rare. Yes, sir. The broken ones are at rare. But uh, yeah. Unsummon is very solid. It gets three. Three it is. Three for unsummon. Aether Gust. Aether this Gust. A, this is another one of those sideboard cards that you'll know when it's really good. We also think you should pick it as a three, similar to the white one. Um, then bring it in when it you bring it in when it's good. Notably, this can. Well, this card has the weirdest templating in the set, but. Um, the versatility makes it you like, can pretty powerful. Put the spell on top of the. You can target a spell on the stack or a permanent that's red or green. Um, so that notably, there's that. But the weird thing is, the opponent chooses whether they put it on the top or the bottom of their library. You don't get to choose that. 
but it's still very solid. Yeah, I mean, like, the the potential or the power level of putting a spell on the top or bottom um, to negate it without countering it is also, like, pretty good. Yeah. So I, I don't can, I don't mind giving can, the opponent the option to put it on top or bottom. Even the protection from green shifting ceratops, you can when it's on the stack, you can cast it on that and sort of answer it. Yeah. It also means that this is one of the I mean it's not gear charts limited as much, but it's one of the only answers to the uh, mythic Chandra. So oh, you can't counter her, but you can deal with her another way. Yeah, okay. You, moving on. They also didn't put the E and the A together, which is sad. I used to like that on the old cards. Yeah, I remember that. Anticipate! Anticipate. Um, everybody knows Anticipate. It's been here for, like, years. I and put it as 1.5. It's always, like, barely playable. Yeah. Almost never makes your 23. That's why we gave it a 1.5. Um, it gets a little bit better if you have more instants in your deck to hold up, but otherwise it's usually about a 1.5. Yeah. Maybe if you have um, the rare Chandra, you could consider it, but 1.5 is uh, being nice, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Moving on to uh, Rhineborn Cutthroat. That's a real card. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me on this. Trust me. Um, um, so this card is a 2-minute 2-1 with Flash. Whenever you cast a spell during an opponent's turn... It gets plus one, plus one counter on it. Um, I think that this card with Flash makes it a ton better. It also makes it so that it's almost like a combat trick or like an ambush viper. Or better than um, multiples, even. Or better than multiples. Um, but just the ability to grow is also very, very good. Um, I give it a two uh, just because it and doesn't go in every deck. But If it gets one counter, it's... Becomes quite good. Yeah. But, uh... The potential. I like it a little bit better, so I give it 2.5. Alright, so 2.5 for Brineborn Cutthroat. Uh, then we have Cerulean Jim. I mean, Cerulean Drake. <laughs> <laughs> That's my Cerulean first thought. Cerulean Drake. <laughs> uh, this is another one of those Color Hoser protection cards. But this one's a lot less good in your main deck. Yeah, you hoser. So one mana, one one flyer is not very good. Uh, it can. <clears throat> there aren't that many spells that it could really target, or like counter. Like there's like mind rot or burn spells, I think, basically. Yeah, but there's not that many burn spells either. Yeah, so it's it's sacrifice ability is not super good either. Um, you mostly just it's a card I think that you should put in your deck if your opponent is playing red. But it should stay out of your main deck. Don't put it in the main. I rate it as a one. I rate it as a point five. It's strictly sideboard for me. All right, point five it is. Sorry, Drake. <laughs> okay. Uh, Metropolis. Metropolis Sprite. Uh, we've seen this one before in limited. Absolutely, we have. <clears throat> and I think it's still solid, if not a little bit better than it was before. Yeah, especially with all the um, flyer synergies in the format. Mm -hmm. um, like, which is why I gave it a 2.5 that's why I also gave it a 2.5 it's been pretty solid Like, it's one of the few flying 2 drops and it's that's important so that's why it's really solid 2. yay wasp 2.5 for 2 metropolis sprite for wasp the piranjas piranjas the moat piranhas one thing that uh, Brandon noted that I didn't notice in the beginning is that it has defender because it is in the moat. Yeah, you have to go to the, you have to come to them so <laughs> they can eat you. <laughs> <laughs> Which uh, I I just saw piranhas on here and then I was like, oh, it's a three three defender. Okay, whatever. Like I, I completely was oblivious to the moat part, but you know what? That is some good val or flavor flavor. That's a pretty solid rate for a defender, but most uh, deck I don't think. A lot of decks are going to be in the market for a defender. No. That's why it's a little bit less than solid. Like, the rate's solid, but it also has defender, which makes it a lot worse. Yeah. Um, so, so, I gave it a 1.5. Uh, 
I gave it a two because I felt like um, you could put it in maybe the more of the slower decks to be able to defend off against aggro. Um, but I, that I just think you're gonna play it in less than half your blue decks. That's why I couldn't give it a two. Yeah. So then um, that's why I can see like one point five is probably more accurate. Okay, one point five from what Prana is. Um, so negates negate. I mean, one point five. Negate and draft is always not that great. It's usually more of a sideboard card, so that's why I also gave it a one point five. If you played limited before with negate, it's probably just as bad slash good now. In green, it's just gonna be creature based, and I don't know. If it's creature based, negate's not gonna be that great. <laughs> no. It's gonna be ungreat. Alright, next is Renowned Weaponsmith. Renowned Weaponsmith! This guy. Things a little bit better than he looks. He can tutor. And he can block. <laughs> and he can. Block. And he can ramp your artifacts. Yeah, But boy. if he's not doing any. If he's not ramping your artifacts consistently and he doesn't have any of those two cards to tutor for you don't put it in your deck that's why he's a 1.5 nah -uh. but i think i'd always play him if i have both the bow and the vial and i wanted to play them or at least or if i have one like to two vials a good amount of artifacts because you can do vials. some really good things with his mana ability if you have enough artifacts that's true but i give him a 1.5 well, that's be playable well. artifacts playable not all of them are let me tell you. Spoiler alert. Playable. Playable artifacts. 1.5. 1.5. And we have Tails End. Where's that? There we go. You're a madman. Um, <laughs> this card for me is a zero, and you can't convince me otherwise. Alright, so I put it as a 1.5. So def defend your grade, please. All right. When does this card do anything ever? When does it do anything ever? All right, or so anything worthwhile anyway. Uh, most creatures that everybody is going to play has a triggered ability or an activated ability. Planeswalkers also have activated abilities but as when well. When is it worth it to counter them? And spend a card on that. When it's very, very mean towards you. I mean, like, you could stop a Frostlings from um, tapping down your only blocker. I'm not you spending could stop... a card on that. <laughs> no. Okay, then you die to their attack. Like, I mean, there's just a bunch of different cards. I'm not holding that... up two mana <clears throat> to hope to do that, and I don't want to spend a card to do that. I don't. I don't think it does enough. Like yeah, one point five is like this is you like don't the want most to narrow but... card imaginable. It's not the most narrow card imaginable. There's still like a ton of uh, it's one legendary creatures. It's extremely narrow. If I see maybe like two or three legendary bombs out of my opponent somehow, maybe I'll bring it in from my sideboard. But I'm never gonna ever put this card in my main deck. Okay, well I'm gonna I'm gonna reluctantly keep it at 1.5. Um, Still, in there. since there is a, a bigger discrepancy, we'll push it towards you a little bit. Um, so we'll do a 0.5 on Tails End. Um, so but I but I still think that it end. has. Um, I think it could be your 23rd card if you really have to choose. Like there's there's things that can that it can help, um, especially you know, if some of them are like did negative. You know abilities. that you can play as many basic lands as you want. I did I don't know think that. this card is better than an eighteenth land. All right, I'm not playing it. Uh, Zephyr's charge. What's next? Zephyr's charge. Give your team flying. For the low, low price, the price of, of two all your mana, mana per creature. Of all your mana. This makes this card weird. Almost makes it like a blue-green. In other formats, this has been like a blue-green 
gold card effectively because you would only play it in that deck. But now there's a flying deck. If you somehow don't get enough flyers, but you have the flying payoffs for your flying deck, maybe you play this. Oh, maybe you sideboard it in against the flying deck. You could. That's pretty solid. But I still think it's too narrow, so it's a 1.5 for me. 1.5 because it is too narrow. Kind of like. I don't have creatures. Kind of like. Next Tales. card is what? Befuddle? Befuddle. <laughs> Befuddle. All right. I liked this card in the beginning, um, but I ended up. It's not that hard to imagine getting to a two like for it. one out of it, but it's another one of those cards like anticipate that just never seems to make your main deck. Cause it's not really removal. It's not really a creature, so you only have like maybe one or two slots for cards that aren't those kind of cards. And that are more like combat tricks than anything. Yeah. Yeah, it's really so, a combat trick. That's why I gave it a one. Like yeah, you play it one. sometimes as a twenty third card, but most of the time you don't. Twenty three or one it gets a one. One. This card does not get a one. Well, it's good to see her. Oh, I like this card. It's amazing. Three mana, two one flyer that draws you a card. Yeah, I really, really like the rate on this card and that it replaces itself. And then as flying, and all that together makes. Uh, me think this card is at least a three, but I put it as three point five. Maybe a three point five. But I'm it's not... efficient. It draws you an extra card, and it's a flyer. If which a... All right, I could go to three point five, but I think it's on the lower end of three point five. Like I, I can understand that. Like it's I, it's not like super powerful. You're not picking this over very... murder. Oh, wait, no murders. A... I'm not gonna give it away. Oh, murder. Would we pick it over? Would we put I don't it over know. Murder? But let's let's anyways. go back to that when we get to murder. How about that? All right. Anyways, uh, three point five for be. Cloudkin Seer, especially. Yeah, I can buy a bit of three point five because it's elemental. Three point five and elemental. Elementals matter. Elementals matter. As you'll see later. Pro elementals. Bro Cobra approves of this message. Uh, convolute. Convolute. It's I, a one. It's I, a I decent counter spell, but it's just. Like always worse than cancel, and cancel is like never really that good in limited. Nope. It's pretty situational, and sometimes it doesn't even counter bombs that you want to counter. That's why convolute's a one. Probably don't oh, no. play it most of the time. Just don't play it. Yeah. Frost links. Frost links. It comes in a jar. Notably, frost links is an elemental, which makes it like maybe the best it's always. Ever Elemental kitty cat. Elemental cat. Meow, you're frozen. Yeah. I mean, um, carbonite looks but, like. Uh, um, just so what it does, plus being elemental, I think makes it very solid. I gave it a three. It's a three. A three for Frostlings. Tap that. Very, very solid card. Crap down. Muyen Ling Scott Denancer. This card, I think, is really good. It's pretty solid it's a uh, starts at two loyalty which is pretty low um but it's plus two gives a target creature up to one target creature minus two loses all flying which can be pretty important yeah it's, it's actually been really important in the games i played against this card <laughs> and then uh it's minus three is you make a four four blue elemental bird token with flying mm -hmm. minus eight is your islands get draw card it's pretty good. It's a really powerful ultimate, but even if you're not ultimating it, it's making like a 4-4 and making their creature really bad and also can't block your 4-4. It's been really powerful, especially for 3 mana. That's a really good rate for all of that. Yeah, I think if the loyalty was that's 4, why, as absurd as that is to say, if that it would was be four, insane. it would be a 5. But because it starts so it low... Would be a four, it would be effectively a 4-4. Four, four. For three with flying, I know. with massive upside. <laughs> yeah, it would. It would be better than Sarah. Sa who's Sarah? Sarah. The planeswalker Sarah from Modern Horizons. Oh, I never thought she was that good anyway. 
Uh, but yeah, so 4.5 is what I said. I also gave her 4.5. She's so close to being bomb. Same rate, same rating as a Johnny, but I think this is slightly better. Comes down to turn earlier. Almost to 5. You can start going uh, cray cray. 4.5 for Moomy and Ling. Um, Portal of Sanctuary. 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 This card is, can be really good. Most of the time it's not going to do much. Notably, it doesn't save you from pacifism. Uh, if you use it, it puts that pacifism or sleep paralysis back in their hand. But if you have your own auras that you're putting on your creatures, it also bounces those. If you want, <laughs> I guess. If you want. But I think this card is really narrow. Uh, you could play it probably best in like the elementals deck. That probably has the most comes into play abilities. Yeah. You probably don't want to play this card unless you have a lot of powerful comes into play abilities for your creatures because you can only activate it during your turn. So you can't really use it to protect your creatures from anything. Except combat tricks. If you're attacking. Yeah. <laughs> if they're using a combat trick defensively, <laughs> you can use it. <laughs> but yeah, 1.5. 1.5. You'll play it sometimes. You'll probably know when it's good. Uh, we got our mill card finally. Yep, that's a mill card. Saint Sage's Road Denison. Three mana, two, three. Whenever another blue creature enters the battlefield under your control, target player puts the top two cards of the library into the graveyard. Mill is not a thing. I give this card at 1.5 because I can imagine it being good in a really defensive blue deck, which has like a win condition. And also, there's a lot of creatures with only two toughness, so I think a three mana, two, three might be. Just a little bit better than usual. I gave it a one. I mean, <laughs> that's not a big difference. One and one point five. It isn't, but we both. Agree I just feel like it's very fringe. You'll play it sometimes. Yeah. But you probably would never be thrilled to play it. I never want to play it. It's not good enough. You but just, who knows? You if you're love in a, the finer things in life, like milling your opponent to death. One point five <laughs> for Sage's Road Denison. <laughs> You don't know how bad I just want to mill people, okay? Like, Modern Horizons was like a fresh breath of fresh air because, like, I almost got to mill people. You never <sighs> milled anyone to death with the can't, with the crab? It's so good. It's so, it so good. I, I had a deck of four, close. but I could have five, but Magic Online auto-picked a different card for me. Good job, internet. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> Warden of Evo Isle. I couldn't even take it. It was so sad. 2-2 two, two flyer, creature spells with flying you cast, cost one less to cast. This I gave card. it a 2.5. Very, very solid stat value here, but just the ability to be able to play your other flyers out a lot more quickly. I gave it a 3. I think, on average, it'll be like a 2.5 in a deck with not a lot of flyers, but in the flyers deck, this card is insane. <laughs> Yeah, and like a Flyers deck, I can see it being like so 3.5. I kind of, I kind of like... averaged it to a 3. Okay. So, 3 uh, for Warden of Eos Isle. 3 for Warden of Eos Isle. Uh, Speaking of flying payoffs. Winged words! Words can have I wings. I love it probably more than I should, but 2 mana draw 2 is so much more powerful than two, 3 mana draw 2. So on its face value... Like, the floor of this card is Divination, which I think Divination would be pretty good in this format anyway. But all you need is one creature with flying. Any creature with flying at all. And you can have two minute Divination. You can have Chart of Course with Raid. <laughs> Chart of Course with Raid. So Why does uh, it have, gave, like, the rare I gave Winged Words a uh, three. But I think it's even more valuable than that in a deck with a good amount of flyers. Why does it have the... Because it's foil? Yeah. It's usually just for rares. I guess. Sorry, I got distracted. Anyway. You, you already <clears throat> bought it, so they're all I gave it a now, three. I guess. I gave it a three, but like normal ones, they don't. Oh, yeah. Right. That's only for rares. Rares and foils, In, in right? paper. No, not for foils. Oh, whatever. Well, anyway, that. three for winged words. All right. Uh, bone to ash. Uh, bone to ash. We're gonna have a discrepancy time. Hopefully, we're not gonna talk too long about this, but I am hopeful 
that this format's not going to be really fast, so Bone to Ash will be pretty good. Gave Bone to Ash a hope, uh, probably pretty, uh, uh optimistic 2.5. All right, well, I'm at 1.5. You might just need other stuff in your deck to do with all that mana if they don't play a creature. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good if they just play right into it. I'll tell you that. I don't know. I, I put it down as 1.5 because I don't normally like um, counter spells in general in Limited. Um that's why I feel like most of the counter spells, like if I do have to draft them, I'll put them in the sideboard just because I want to know what I need to counter as opposed to just holding up mana for no reason. Every so deck's going to have creatures, Alex. Yeah, but how many are they going to have? Like, when is it going to be a good time for you like, to do that? Like, 10. do you want to play your creatures instead of trying to counter one of theirs? What if they end up spending like their mana to play like a Planeswalker or a non-creature spell? Then oh, you're kind of like yeah. sitting there and you wasted your turn. Well, there are ways to play around it. That's why I think. But sometimes this is just cryptic command. It can be. Um, but like, <laughs> I mean, there can there can be a positive argument, a argument for but for a lot of different it's things. A joke. Like, um, yeah, I don't know. I just didn't really I like it all that much. Think that if this is slow format. It's a 2.5. Otherwise, it's probably 1.5. But we'll just have to wait and see how fast Bone it is. Because I don't know yet. I haven't done any drafts yet. Gets a 2. Because I'd have to play on Magical Mind, and I won't do that. 2. Drawn, Drawn from Dreams. dreams. Koi Pond Fun. Na, 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 na. Sometimes this card is... Uh, Magical. Uh, Card. The one with Delve that got banned. Uh, dig through dig time. Through for, yeah, yeah dig sometimes through this time. card is Dig Through Time. A lot of times I would play to Dig Through Time as four mana sorcery drawn from dreams. This is Dig Through Time, just sorcery. It's not quite as good as Dig Through Time. But no, but it it's is like quite good. the average cost. Like, probably. Uh, we think that this one will be slow enough that the, and the selection is so powerful. You get so much selection. Seven cards. Two are the top seven. That's so good. So you have to look through like a, a fourth of, times you'll of your find deck. what you're looking for. Um, so we gave this card a four. Solid four. Play it in all your blue decks. All of them. All of them. Another card that is you also play very powerful. Decks. Also got a four. Eight of a three mana four four flying for four. That if they don't kill it, you just get a free removal spell. It's great. So good. It's unstoppable. Yeah, play it in all your blue decks. Every time. <coughs> so good. Fortress Crab! <laughs> Fortress Crab. It's so good. It man. has uh, lots of... I think most often you'll play this as like something to block on the ground while you smash them in the air in your blue-white deck. Definitely put Gauntlets of Light on it. <laughs> Give it plus zero plus two, and now it's an eight eight crab. That's so mimi. Done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Gets a one. Not in magical Christmas land. It's a <laughs> one point five or a one. Um, I'm sorry. I'm gonna. Be, it's a one. A like one. you never play. Like you. There's gonna be cards that you draft that are gonna be better than this card. There has to be. We played. I don't know. I think it's 1.5. I think you're going to play this card more than you think. 1.5. But we should move on. Five. Honestly, like, we've played this card in, like, every core set that's been printed in. And the set it was printed in originally, which... What was it originally printed in? What is the percentage of time that you actually play this card? Uh... 25. 25. One out of Maybe four games 30. you put it in. I don't know. It's a good side... It can be a good, good sideboard card, but I think you definitely main deck it in your Flyers deck. Leyline of Anticipation. the ground so good. All right, Leyline, moving on to Leyline of Anticipation. Leyline! It's a Leyline, so what do we say to Leyline's chat? We say, not today. <laughs> leave it in the sideboard. Zero for Leyline of Anticipation. 
I did 0. 0.5. <laughs> which I wanted means to that do it's 0. 0.5, be... but honestly, I can't actually imagine putting this in my deck being yeah. correct. But boy, do I love playing with Flash. Yeah, so like Flash could be like a really cool thing that you could have. It also means that you can play all your sorcery speed stuff at instant speed, like the, so sad the to Lumble like... that I did earlier with the... Dude, I'm so... If I have... If I don't have this and I opening hand and I draw it, I'm gonna be so sad because, like, I'm just never gonna have the time to play it. Eternal Isolation could be played at instant speed. Now. Oh, yeah. There you go. So good. And you can blow out their combat trick. But, again, it's just not a very good card. It's kind of like a wasted pick from time to time. I say um, just don't put it in your deck. Yeah, so zero. Put it in your deck if you want to have fun. But not if you want to win. Not if you want to win. Next is Octo Profit. Octo Profit. Which, the best thing about this card is the name. Yeah, it is. Uh, the rest of this card is. Eh. It's alright. It's pretty cute. Cool. It's pretty cute. Cool. I guess it's okay. I actually gave it a 1.5, but. Maybe it's. Eh, I'm actually gonna change that to 2. Because Where's I don't like Hill thing? Giants, but I do like Scrying 2. I think you, Where's you also gave Octo it a two. Profit. Yeah, you give it two. Two! Yeah, two. A two for Octo Profit. It's um, pretty cool. It's better, way better than a Hill Giant. Because it's two is, fucking Octopus. Scrying 2 is pretty good. Scry 2! The rate's not good, but Scrying 2 is. So, two for Octo Profit. And two. Next. Is, two. What's our next card? Uh, Sleep Paralysis! Oh, yeah. That one. The blue removal spell. The blue removal spell. This one's kind of expensive at four, um, but I give it a three because it's a decent removal spell in blue, yeah, which they don't really have too many It's slightly expensive, but it's like the best common removal spell that blue has, so you just play it when you're blue. Three it is. Three for sleep paralysis. Wave Crasher. Yorox Wave Crasher. I like how you just didn't go for that. <laughs> you're just like, Wave Crasher. Nah. Yar, Yarox, Yar, Yarox. That's the name of the Panharmonicon Elemental that we'll get to later. Yarox Wave Crasher. I get four mana, four four. That when he enters the battlefield, return another creature you control to its owner's hand. I gave it a two point five. Um, I gave it a three. I've been liking this three. card. Four mana, four four is a really, really good rate for blue. And notably, if you have no other creatures, it's just a 4-mana four 4-4. Four, four. But if you have another creature, you have to bounce it. Sometimes that's not great. Other times you get to reuse stuff, especially other elementals, which notably this thing is an elemental. And elemental! You always play it in your elemental deck. Elementals matter. Which is why I think it's a 3. I think it's pretty solid. Some cards you don't really want to bounce, but... Um, if you build your curve right, like, if you can just play it by it's itself, good, I think. then um, you don't need to bounce the other creature, which means it's just a four mana four four, which is pretty solid. Elemental creature also pumps it up, um, but with the point five discrepancy, it's going to be pushed up to a three. Three so for three. Yacht, pressure. Air elemental. Air elemental. He swallowed a pill. And it got caught in his stomach. It does kind of look like that, doesn't it? Yep. Alright, Air Elemental is your classic 5 mana 4-4 four, four, for 3, which is really what, for 5, which is which, which is what we call those, anyway, Air Elemental. And Air Elemental, um, especially in core sets, for me, always gets a 4. Always gets a 4. Damn. I put it as 3.5. Just got a really good It's a super... Super strong body. Um, it's most likely going to be going in like all of your blue decks. But it's an elemental, but... so it should be a 4. Otherwise it would be a 3.5, I think. Yeah. But it is an elemental, which matters. Elementals matter. Flyers matter. I've got a little bit of synergy. It's a point, extra point five. Plus, we're off by 0.5, so you lose! Ah, uh, damn it. Alright, four it is. Four for Elemental. Four! For <laughs> Air Elemental. Victory. God damn it. Victory for Brandon. 
<laughs> oh, Bore Elemental. Bore Elemental. What's the other thing? The other, other blue meat. Uh, so it's a 5 mana 3 4, which is pretty okay. With flying, that's a good rate. With flying. But also. It also has the Frost Titan effect where you need to uh, pay an additional 2 to be able to. Um, so only part of the ability. It make your but... removal really clunky. So it makes this card pretty hard to deal with overall. That's why mm -hmm. I gave it a three. I also I think gave it'd it be a about two point five, but it's an elemental, so yeah, right. Elementals are good in the set. The other downside to it is that you can still use abilities to target it, not just uh, not just yeah. You can still use spells, abilities like frostlings so. and stuff, but yeah, you can't really permanently get rid of it <laughs> without paying that extra two. Unless you have a dragon. And Cavalier of the Gales. Gales Cavalier. This, this guy is... is very solid. He's even better than the White Cavalier. A he lot better. He is infinitely better than the White Cavalier. <laughs> be uh, hater. Five mana, like five five with five flying. Higher. He's the F Cavalier. Five mana, five five with flying. He gets to brainstorm, which is draw three, put two from your hand on top of your library in any order. Mm. Then when he dies, you get to shuffle at your library and then scry two. I mean, what can we really say about this guy? It's five mana, five, five flyer that brainstorms. When it dies, it goes in your deck and it shuffles too. That's just a really insane rate. Plus, it's an elemental. 4.5 for Cavalier Gaos. Yep. You just... 4.5. Not quite a 5 for the 5-5 five, five flyer for 5, but... Pick it over everything, except for if you have a 5 in your pack, I guess. Yep. One of them has to be foil, though. Yep. 4.5. Then we got Atomus, All Seen, Atomus. Six mm -hmm. mana, four, five with a bunch of text. It's a flyer, which makes it even better. Uh, it's also a legendary creature, which means that it gets countered by that two mana spell that we were talking about earlier that we had a controversy about. But besides that point. <laughs> sure, I guess. Uh, three mana, tap it. It can draw two cards and discard a card. And then uh, whenever he deals. <laughs> Weirdest trigger it, ability. But kind of sweet. I really hope I get to do this to someone at some point in the format. Whenever it deals damage to an opponent, you may reveal your hand. If cards with at least six different converted mana costs are revealed this way, that player loses the game. Yeah. I just want to hit my opponent and then reveal a straight. And pretend <laughs> I'm playing poker and win. Yeah, right? It's like, yay, I win. Zero, Zero one, two, three, four, five, game. I win. <laughs> and if you're not doing that... He can attack, or he could just give you so much card advantage. Card advantage is key. Well, so much selection, plus one card advantage. But I guess I gave attempts this a 4.5 as well. 4.5. I think he's a little seven. bit worse of a 4.5 than Cavalier, but he definitely deserves 4.5. Yeah, the card advantage that he gets over time is better than Cavalier's abilities, but Cavalier does have the better stats and mana efficiency, so... Okay. They're on par. Moving on to uh, that one. This That's card. Captivating Geyer. One of my favorite cards from the set, I think. It can just be like a huge blowout against your opponent. It can be. It's not always, though. Mm, uh, Alex always? likes this card a little bit more than I do. Um, when is this not a blowout? This card is... Sea God's Revenge, but slightly worse, because I'm going to scry one. <laughs> oh no! I mean, I've played with this card before. It can be quite powerful. It can be a huge tempo blowout. But I don't think tempo is going to matter so much in this format. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, that's why I rated it a 3.5. I put it as a 4. I feel like this is like a one-sided board removal. And... Um... You definitely don't... You can use it as tempo, but it's it's more or less as, like, a game-winning card, I think. Uh, especially if you're, like, in, like, a blue-green type of setting. Um, also, if you're, like, in a Flyers type Or flying on your opponent's side. And then um, swing in for victory for that turn, yeah, but... Yeah, it's a, could be a um, good finisher. You could also return one of your creatures that you want to replay as, like... Uh, you could like return like frost links or something, so it's like extra removal on the following turn. 
Pseudo removal tempo. Is that um, if they only have two creatures, maybe I'll do that. Yeah. So then it it just depends. Like it's it's not like incredibly versatile, but it does I think I a very have, similar effect to I the, don't quite the black think finale. It's a four, but since we're point five off. 3.5 3. for Captivating guy. guy. It's just not a bomb, so I can't give it a 4. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, Frills. Did you just skip flow of tears? That's a real card. Oh, my bad. <laughs> right, Flood of Tears. Flood of Pretty Tears. Pretty similar to Captivating Guy. Like it bounces a bunch of stuff, but this bounces every non land permanent. But Even you, your stuff. If you return four of your own things, you get to put any permanent from your hand on the battlefield. So it can, like land. It basically always catches you up on board and puts you a little bit ahead if you have bounced four things. Um, but yeah. it's a much worse finisher than Captain Angar, so we had to give it a worse grade. Also, more often than not, if you're having to like return a bunch of stuff. I don't know, there's very few situations that you'll have four permanents and you're like, oh, I just want to return everything back. Like, I don't know, in big I board stalls like it could be good, elementals. but... <laughs> yeah, right. Bounce all the elementals. Whee! Yay! But, uh, it's yeah. pretty solid. I gave it a three. We, also, we gave it a three. Slightly worse than Captivating Gyre Unlimited. Much better in Constructed, but we're not talking about that right now. Frilled Sea Serpent! Oh, boy. We've seen his kind before. I gave him a one. Yeah, Field Sea Preserver is my definition of a one in a core set. It's just an expensive thing that's like can be kind of good sometimes. So sometimes you play it. That's why it's a one. Moving on. Masterful Replication. <laughs> Masterful Replication. I gave this card a two. Mostly gave... because it's expensive, but it does make two surprise blockers. And they're golems. I give it a 1.5 because the way that I look at it is is that you're just making two 3-3 three, three golems at instant speed, which can be kind of nice. It's hard to imagine when you would ever choose the other mode in limited. Yeah, that mode just doesn't come up. All right, I don't, I don't Unless you like, have three artifact creatures and then they attack. And, like, is that even better? I don't even know if it's better. You could search I'm trying to make this magical Christmas land scenario. Artifact creatures, and you make your other two artifact creatures and seal overseers until they turn. Yeah, you just. But get, I don't know if that's better than just making two golems. You just play the and then the artifacts that the the equipments that make creatures. So then you turn the uh, the equipments later into <laughs> into steel overseers, and then they just get until they turn. Yeah, dude, just put plus one, plus one counters on your equipment. My equipments have plus one, plus one counters? Yeah. That doesn't do anything unless they become a creature again yep. somehow. Yep. All right. Uh, two for Master Full Replication. Because we yep. were close. Two. Uh, Agent of Treachery. I love this guy. I love this card, too. Holy crap. I don't think There's I'm so waiting. many broken seven drops in this format. Oh, I did. And okay. this is one of them. So you get to steal a creature, then if you have three or more permanents that you do not own, you get to draw three cards. At I don't know the how we're going to get there. You can ignore that bottom line of text, everybody. It's very The unlikely. important thing is this is control magic that they can never get rid of. Nope. And we've had opponents that kill it, and they think they might get their thing back, but you, they don't get their thing back. And then they hover it over. You steal that permanent and they like never get it back unless they bounce it um but this guy is really sweet uh that's why i gave him a 4.5 because he always takes their best thing and there isn't really much they could do about it he also I... gives you a 2-3 which you just throw in as a blocker anytime you don't care if it dies nothing happens if it dies sometimes you can get it back from the graveyard so... sometimes it's better in the graveyard i gave it a four only a four um because it's not a bomb it's not a bomb. But it's it's, it's only as bomb. the thing is, is that it's... control magic is only ever as good as what your opponent is playing. I don't know. So like, you have to expect that your opponent's playing like a decent or better deck. It always takes their best card, though. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. It always takes the best card at that moment. 
Well, the best card they have on the board, yeah. Yeah, at the moment. That's why I won't. But it doesn't stop them from playing the next turn, and then, like, you're like, oh. I should have waited. They play the dragon, and then you're just like, bam. Yeah. Game. If you steal their dragon, it's game. As. I don't know how they win. Captain Jedi of Value Town, I agree. <laughs> Taking their dragon after they play. Alright, it. so it's 4.5 then. 4.5. 4.5 Asian Treasury. If it was less, it might be a 5. But it costs 7. And the last one! The last blue card is. Scholar of the Ages. Where is it? Where is it? Oh, yeah. Second page. Uh, this I, chick is bumping. This card has some insane value attached to it. It costs seven for a three three, but that's not that's not the rate you're paying for. You're, but you are getting two instant and or sorcery cards back from your graveyard. So I think if you have enough instant sorcery cards that are good, that this card is really good, and it can even be a finisher because you could just grind out your opponent with value. Very much so. You can also make extra 3 3 golems if you want. <laughs> yeah, sure. I yeah, guess. Pretty solid. Um, um, I gave this card a 3. I gave it a 3. I think some card, some blue decks won't want it if you don't have enough instant sorcery cards or if you're really aggressive, but other one, other decks will really want it because it's really powerful. Hurrah! 3 4 Scholar. That's blue! That's that blue, everybody!